Hello everyone, this is your host Silver De La Rosa and welcome again to my channel on Silver Screen, where learning is interesting. We are now on episode 2 of our season 1, Quantification and Costing of Construction Works, and today we will discuss about the cost estimating techniques. The topics for this episode will be cost estimate, where we are going to discuss about the requirements needed in order for you to carry out a cost estimate and the source of pricing data. We will also going to talk about the techniques used in cost estimating such as the analogous cost estimating, the parametric cost estimating, elemental cost estimating, bottom-up cost estimating, and vendor bid analysis. We will talk also about a budget and we will discuss how to prepare a project budget. To begin with, let us define a cost estimate as a process of forecasting the amount of money needed to complete a project within a defined scope. And in order for you to carry out a cost estimate, you must have a project data. This may include any or all of the following information such as the client's brief, a conceptual design, schematic design, detailed drawings, and specifications. You have also to consider several factors such as the resources, the duration of the project, the location of your project, and inflation. These are only few of the factors that will affect your cost estimate or what are called the cost drivers. Now, as a quantity surveyor, you should be able to provide a cost estimate which corresponds to the available information or data that you have in your hands. Now let us talk about the sources of your pricing data. Where can you find sources that you can use as reference to be used in pricing your cost estimates? You can find them in your internal database. These are the compilation of rates and prices from your previous projects or what we call the historical data. You can also use the values obtained from your benchmarking exercises and the tender returns submitted by your tenderers. You can also obtain a price from quotations submitted by your suppliers and the price books or the cost data publications by various institutions such as the RICS who publishes the Building Cost Information Service, SPONS published by ACOM, and Arcadis Construction Cost Handbook. These are only some of the institutions that has international presence and they collected all their data from various countries and publish it for reference. You can also find a pricing reference from various government organizations in charge of construction in their respective territories. Now that we know what are needed in order to carry out a cost estimate and where to find a source for your pricing data, let us now talk about the techniques used in cost estimating. Let's take a look at this meeting between the client and the quantity surveyor. Here, the client informed the QS that he intend to build a hotel along Orchard Road in Singapore and is asking the QS if the QS can advise how much will it cost. With this limited information, the QS responded that if you wanted a hotel similar to our recently completed project on the same vicinity, the construction cost alone will roughly be at $100 million. That excludes other development costs such as the cost of land acquisition, marketing, and etc. With the limited information, the quantity surveyor was able to provide a cost estimate to the client using a technique called analogous cost estimating. It is a technique used to estimate the cost of the proposed project using the historical values from previous similar projects. Now, let us examine again the response from the QS. Here you will notice that the QS uses similar information from previously finished project. And then, the quantity surveyor informed the client that the 100 million cost estimate is not the only amount that the client will incur, as there are other costs that needs to be considered, such as the cost of land acquisition, marketing, and etc. It is therefore important then that when you provided a cost estimate to the client, 
you have to clearly state what are included and excluded in the cost that you are proposing or you are estimating. The characteristics of analogous cost estimate are it is used at the early stage of the project where limited information are available. It uses historical data and expert judgment. It is also known as top-down estimating and the figure derived from analogous cost estimating is called a ballpark figure. Let us again examine the meeting between the client and the quantity surveyor. Here, the client provided a little bit more information. He said that he would like to build a five-star hotel with 600 bedrooms along Orchard Road in Singapore. And again, he is asking if the quantity surveyor can advise for the cost. With this information, the QS responded that there was a recently completed hotel at the same vicinity. It is also a five-star hotel with 500 bedrooms and the con construction cost for that hotel was around 100 million. So that would be around $200,000 per room. And the proposed project of the client with 600 bedrooms we will have a construction cost of around 120 million. That excludes other development costs such as the cost of land acquisition, marketing, and etc. With this additional information, the QS provided a cost estimate using a technique called parametric cost estimating. It is a technique used to estimate the cost of a proposed project using statistical relationship between historical data and other variables from similar past project. So it's not only historical data. Now, you are using historical data and its statistical relationship with other variables or parameters. If we take a closer look on what the QS had said, you will notice that the QS used a data from a recently completed project and she uses $200,000 per room. So the variable here is per room. And then the QS reminded the client that that is only the construction cost and there are still other costs that needs to be considered like the cost of land acquisition and so on. So parametric cost estimating is also used at the early stage of the project where limited information are available. It also uses historical data and other variables or parameters. And it can be applied to the entire project itself or to the individual element of a project. We will talk about the elements of the project in the next slides. Now, what are these parameters? One of the parameters that can be used are what we call functional unit. These are, for hotel, the functional unit will be number of rooms. For hospitals, you can use the functional unit of number of bed and so on. So if your project is a roadway, you can use also a functional unit of per kilometer. And another parameter is also called functional area. So these are the gross floor area, gross external area, gross internal area, and net internal area. So I would like to remind you that different territories have different considerations in determining these different areas. So I will advise you to visit the building codes of different countries in order for you to determine how to properly measure these functional areas. Another parameter is called a cube or volume. It is simply dividing the total construction cost with the volume of the building. Let us now talk about a technique called elemental cost estimating. It is a budget setting technique which considers the major element or sub-elements of a building and provides an order of cost estimate based on elemental breakdown of a building project. So what are these elements of a building project? The elements of a building project are a major physical part of a building that fulfills a specific function or functions irrespective of its design, specifications, or construction. Examples are the group elements, Example under this category will be the substructure and superstructure. And these group elements or concise elements can be further be divided into the detailed elements. For example, the superstructure can be divided into frame, upper floors, 
roof, and so on. And these detailed elements can further be divided into the amplified elements or sub-elements. Example is that the substructure can further be divided into the standard foundations or specialist foundations. Upper floors can be further divided into balconies or floors and so on. So these are the levels of analysis using the Building Cost Information Service Elemental Standard Form of Cost Analysis based on the New Rules of Measurement 1 or NRM1, Order of Cost Estimating and Cost Planning for Capital Building Works. Now, if your project is a roadway, you may have a different set of elemental groupings. But the theory behind elemental cost estimating is still the same. It still can be applied whether your, your project is a building, a roadway, tunnels, and so on. Elemental cost estimating is used when there is enough data available to identify the components of major building elements and it is easy to understand as the cost distribution shows the cost breakdown by building elements. It is also good for cost planning and it can be used for comparison between the alternative design options and value engineering. Moreover, elemental cost estimating is more reliable compared to analogous or parametric cost estimating. Let us now talk about our next cost estimating technique, which is called the bottom-up cost estimating. It is an estimating technique where the cost of the lowest identifiable component of a work package or deliverable is determined and then summarized or rolled up to higher levels. So now you are estimating from the lowest level and summarizing it up until such time that you reach the top level and determine your total project cost. To understand better, Let's take a look at this work breakdown structure. Supposing we have a construction project. It is a building construction project. The next level of the work breakdown structure, we can have it as substructure and superstructure. And we can further break down superstructure into mechanical and electrical work package, architectural work package, and reinforced concrete work package. We can further break down architectural work package into internal finishes and external finishes. And let's take internal finishes and break it down into activities called tile works and painting works, for example. Now you're at, a, at the activity level. It is all already the lowest level of your work breakdown structure. At this level, you can estimate the cost of the tile works, for example, by determining the material cost, labor cost, and equipment cost needed to carry out your tile works activities. When you sum up all these costs, you, can, you will now have the cost for your tile works. Supposing you also did the same for the painting works, and when you sum up the painting works plus the tile, tile works, you will roll it up to your internal finishes cost. The procedure will go on and on until such time that you determine your total project cost. So this is how the bottom-up cost estimating works. The characteristics of bottom-up cost estimating are it provides a higher level of accuracy and cost certainty. It is also an accurate method to be used to determine the definitive cost estimate. But it is a time-consuming activity and requires a lot of resources to undertake. Especially if you have mega projects, you will need a lot of resources and manpower in order to complete a bottom-up cost estimating. Now the question is, what if your data or expertise are insufficient to carry out a cost estimate? You can use a technique called vendor bid analysis. It is a technique used to determine the cost of the project or item of work by obtaining and analyzing proposals, bids, or quotations from suppliers in order, to, in order to determine the appropriate cost. And the characteristics of this vendor bid analysis are, it is used when the data or expertise are not enough to determine the cost of the item of work. Or it is used when the works are proprietary in nature, 
or to be carried out by specialist contractors. And you have to consider additional factors that may affect your cost estimate. What are these factors? So when you, see, when you receive your bid from your, from your bidders or the quotations from your suppliers, you have to take a look at what are included or not included in their submitted price. Whether you will bear the cost for the howling from, let's say, from the port of, uh, from the port of destination and uh, all the way to your project site, do you still need to prepare a, a storage facility for the materials that will be deliv delivered? So these are some of the factors that you have to take into consideration when you use vendor bid analysis technique. Let us now talk about a budget and discuss how to prepare a project budget. But first, let us define a budget as the total estimated cost needed to complete a project over a defined scope and period of time. It involves the process of aggregating the estimated cost of individual activities or work packages to establish an authorized cost baseline. In order to prepare a budget, you, we have to consider the following costs. The direct cost or the cost that can be directly associated or identified with a specific contract or deliverables of a project. Examples of these are the material, labor, and equipment cost for a particular or specific work package. Now the question is, what if you are unable to identify the cost for a specific work package? Example, uh, let's take for example, the cost of your tower crane. Tower crane serves all the work packages. Therefore, the cost cannot be identified to a single work package alone. Instead, the cost of the tower crane will be under your preliminaries cost. And preliminaries is considered to be one of the indirect costs. Or indirect costs are the expenses that cannot be directly associated or identified with a specific item of work, but are necessary for the completion of the project. Examples of the indirect costs are the preliminaries costs, such as the water, electricity, site offices, management and supervisory staff, non-productive labors and overheads, and etc. So now we know what is the direct cost and what are the indirect costs. The next cost that we have to consider is the contingency reserve. It is the amount intended to cover for items that are not yet known at the time of the estimate, but may occur on statistical basis. These items are also referred to as risk or known unknowns. So now we know about the direct cost, indirect cost, and contingency reserve. Let's take a look at how to apply this cost in order to prepare a project budget and authorize cost baseline. Now, supposing you already have your activity cost estimate, composed of your direct cost and indirect costs. Because this is only an estimated cost, there is still certain degree of uncertainty as to the final outturn of the cost of activity. In order to take care of this uncertainty, you need to introduce activity contingency reserve. So your activity contingency reserve plus the estimated cost of your activity will now become your work package cost estimate. Now within a project, there are several work packages and there may be some interfacing works within these work packages. Because of these interfacing works and for any other factors, there are still certain degree of uncertainty within the work package level. Again, in order to take care of this uncertainty, you need to apply your contingency reserve for the work package. So this contingency reserve plus your work package cost estimate will now become your control accounts and also your cost baseline. Now your cost baseline covers only for all the activities and work packages identified in the project. There may be still certain activities or, or items of work that needs to be carried out that were not identified. And depending on your contract, this unidentified item of work may be the risk for the client or for the management. Also, during the course of the construction, the management may introduce certain variations to the scope. So these are only examples of the risk that the client may have. 
in order to take care of these risks, the client need also to have the management reserve. So the cost baseline plus the management reserve will now become the project budget. So these are the components of the project budget. Next, on silver screen. Join me in our season finale for quantification and costing of construction works as we discuss cost planning. Please don't forget to hit like, share the video, and subscribe to my channel. You may also turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. Thank you and see you next episode.